This message comes from our 2022 lead sponsor of NPR Music, State Farm. To celebrate their surprisingly great rates, State Farm invites you to discover the surprisingly great genre space music. With its ambient roots, space music has tranquil, relaxing sounds that will transport you to a different galaxy. If you're looking for something out of this world to vibe out to during your next listening party, space music is your jam. Make sure to check out space music, then check out State Farm's surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome and thanks for joining our live listening party for Pedro the Lion's Havasu. I'm excited to be here with David Bazan. David, how are you doing? I'm all right. How's it going, honey? It's going all right. You know, I feel like um, this, uh, this album has, uh, for me at least, made me feel a little bit warmer. I'm in Ohio, and so it's, you know, we are in the throes of real winter now after some false starts with the winter season. And it was good to sink into this album because it made me feel uh, a little bit warmer. And I thank you for that. You're welcome. All right, so we're about to stream the entire new album. And then after that, we'll be back and we'll dive into what we just heard, talk about how it came to be, talk about process and writing, which I was very excited about and I am excited to talk about. And you can join us in the chat ask questions and shout out your favorite tunes and favorite things you heard on the record. So without further ado, here is the album Havasu by Pedro the Lion. See you back in a bit. Hidden reservoir 
Don't you have any other 
for breakups later On the last day of school You pulled me aside And I tried to play it cool You'd watched me all year And you knew Bill was wrong And you wished you had stayed through the end of our song a new companion but I couldn't read the signs carnations and chocolate for my first real valentine making her feel awful for her plan to break it off I knew I could shield her from hard feelings If I could abandon mine Passed her a note in history Through her best friend by her side You can't help not liking me I let her off Expertly erasing How badly shook I was Cause something heavy Wouldn't let me Be my own valentine Oh 
got my hopes up pretty high And an indoor, outdoor roller skating ring There's some Shuffled out to a slow song that still takes my breath away. It's 
scrubbed the walls for our deposit bag. The moving truck all loaded up, baking in the driveway glass, leaving. Trying to find a good feeling, a good feeling, a good feeling. Will we always be trying to get a? I buried my first secret self when I was only three, and I can't bring this one with me. On that we both. Pretending to do handstands, feet below the waterline. You stay on the bottom, and I swim for the light. Wrap my towel. To find a good feeling, a good feeling, a good feeling, will I always be trying to get a Lost myself in Havasu, where the sunset lives over stucco houses and canyons, with the flexible attitude I fell in.
where the redwoods live over cliffs over the ocean keep a flexible attitude but don't fall away prepare Welcome back. I'm Hanif Abdurraqib. Thank you all for joining us. And thank you, David, for being here to talk with me about the album and, uh, you know, maybe expand on some of the themes that were happening within it, which, uh, were, which are really thrilling to me. And I was hoping we could talk kind of uh, as, as two writers, perhaps. Yeah. No doubt. That would be great. Um, Thanks for having me. No, of course. I'm such a, I'm such a fan and I've been such a fan for a long time. And so this is a real pleasure. Um, I, when listening to this album, you know, during my like second or third go round through it, I began thinking about albums that are maybe defined by a geography, an album where an artist goes to a place and then the work becomes one with that place, like Bowie's Berlin trilogy or um, albums that are maybe definitive uh, cartographies of a city like LA by X, things like this. Uh And um, this album kind of fit into that for me, because not only is it about a place, but you took like multiple pilgrimages back to this place, uh, Lake Havasu and Havasu in Arizona. And um, I was wondering if first you could give some background to your relationship with it as a young person and how that shifted as an older person in your returns. Yeah, um, we moved uh, there after living in Phoenix my my whole life uh, when I was 12. So just in in the summer between sixth and seventh grade. And so I spent one year there in seventh grade. And um, that's a, you know, there was a lot of changes that were happening for me. Like we went from, my sister and I went to Christian school all growing up until we moved to Havasu. So that was like public school for the first time. And like, um, you know, just that experience of making friends or trying to make friends and in junior high and, like um and then it was like a desert lake town you know like so and i grew up going to desert lakes with my grandparents like uh, a week in the summer just like camping and and um and like swimming and uh, water skiing and stuff and so um it had all the it felt like a vacation place but then then you go and like live there and it's you don't really get to access the vacation part of it it's just like a a small town in the middle of the desert. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, it, it, and for me, it's a place that when I go back there, I'm reminded of the unfinished business I have with that kid, you know, um, just the, the bad bounces that just never got healed or, you know, just that kid needed attention, that 12, 13 year old kid. And so this is a way for me to go back and just sort of see that kid and kind of parent that kid a little bit from where I'm at now um, in a way that no one could really see to do when I was there the first time. I'm glad you kind of veered organically into the voice of the kid um, because there's something about the writing on this album that interested me. Uh, I'm very interested in perspective as writers and perspectives of the speaker in a song or a poem or even Mm -hmm. an essay and um the i you know we get i and my that presentation of the writing and that is Mm -hmm. presented as your younger self like very much autobiographical but speaking as you grown up speaking uh or transmitting a narrative through your younger self um 
And I'm always yeah. interested in the process of getting back into that, like getting back into, you know, persona work is one thing, but it becomes, I think, a bit more, it can become a bit more emotionally fraught or complex when the persona that's being embodied is a, is a past version of ourselves that we know well. Yeah, it's true. And, and the question for me was, you know, the, the way that, that my life was going and that year went, I really, there's this pattern of trying to move on from, you know, the rejected self or like the, you know, like you're trying to grow out of that, like embarrassing, sloppy place. And so there's a sense in which, especially I moved a lot from there, like year after year. And so it was, I had, I really had to ask the question, like, what was this kid feeling? Like, what was I feeling then? What, and the big question was, is what was I masking? Like, what was the experience I was having and what was I presenting? And what was the gap between those? Because it, it was a gap that I, it started there and then I never had the space to go back and, and bridge that gap um, between what I was experiencing and what I was presenting to my family or friends or whatever. Um, and so it was, it, it was scary because I think I'd, I'd spent the last few decades continuing to try to do that. You know, you're not supposed to dramatize your pain. You're supposed to kind of downplay it and like suck it up and like, you know, go with the, 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 the program or like conform to the environment that you're, that you're in. And, um, I guess I just realized when I think now, like, so I'm masking pain, like how long have I been doing that? Where does this pattern go back to? And for me, it was like this year was a, a year of becoming a master at masking pain. And so it was, it was scary to go back and start to, to, to do that and to try to picture what this kid was going through. Cause I was worried about, how it makes my parents feel or how it makes my sister feel or, you know, any number of, of shame and guilt responses to, to the, the whole thing. And so it was, it was tricky to go back and just ask like this kid sitting in this car with these other people, like what is he experiencing? And, and how, you know, how long has it been since I really reckoned with those, that those experiences that, that I was having. What was kind of the process of also reckoning with the physical geography? Like how many times, cause you don't live here anymore, obviously you don't live in Havasu, but how mm -hmm. many times did you return during the making of the album and what were you seeking in those returns and did you find it? Yeah. I mean, the, you know, the impetus for these, I think on a personal level, these records like Phoenix and Havasu is okay. to unearth, you know, M memories and um and just sort of like sit with uh with the stimuli that comes from you know going i so i went back there maybe four times um and each time you know i just i kind of had a different um, maybe mission or something um and it really was about collecting Im impressions and trying to like you know, start a song while I was down there so that it was sort of like, you know, it's that ephemeral sense of like, how do you capture a place? It's not even objectively capturing the place. It's capturing the subjective experience that I had with it and what it meant to me. And so because it was a lot of personal work, um, that was a part of it too. just go down and like, let my nervous system feel what this feels like. And then hopefully out of it will come enough data so that I can just make uh, the songs and without being too finicky or just like letting it, it kind of flow. And in the end, I feel like I did like the, it takes me to that place so directly when I put the record on. And my experience with it, um, and I know that no one else is going to be having that experience, and it's, people are going to interact with it how they do. Um, but I wanted, yeah, like I didn't make songs when I lived there, but I thought about music 
and sound and vibration and things. And that place had a certain sense of that for me. And so I, I was hoping to get close to that. Um, and I feel like for my money, I did. Um, and and in the, in the end, the goal is that my subconscious is like, yeah, like we partnered in this and we did this work together. And now at the end, like nothing's perfect, but like we, yeah, I feel like I've made peace with, with myself around this stuff as, yeah. Yeah. You had mentioned Phoenix and a big thing I was thinking about was I, one of my listens, I listened to Phoenix and then this album back to back, I revisited Phoenix and then played this. Whoa. And I was, when you, when you were done with Phoenix or when you stopped, you know, when Phoenix was written, recorded and put out, did you have the feeling that you were not done with the general idea of these kind of revisits or these kind of like small resurrections or, um, do you not think of these as kind of companion pieces, emotional companion pieces, if nothing else? Yeah, they are. I, I have a bigger project in mind that spans maybe five records. Um, and when Phoenix was done, I really thought of it as the first one. And the way that Phoenix ends and Havasu begins, mm -hmm. like I was hoping for, like I don't want it to be too up my own, you know, uh, rear end but like I want there to be like um like a flow between them because for me it's like a continuous thing um which it feels yeah, like it is are... I mean, I do, you know don't want to move is kind of like the uh, which is the first song that we heard on the album don't want to move uh, mm -hmm. on havasu mm -hmm. and it's kind of like this uh it's pretty jarring. It's beautiful, but jarring. You know, it's this instant it, to have an album that begins with a kind of dislocation and resistance, uh, lyrically at least. Mm -hmm. it, it does feel like um, it does feel like a continuation of Phoenix, but it also feels distinctly more um, resistant. There's a kind of um, there's a kind of self awareness to. Uh, the movement in the lack of desire to move that we're greeted with on this yeah. album. And I think that's, uh, yeah, both like physically, but also emotionally. Yeah, that's rad. I, I just listened to it this morning or started to, to just trying to get my head into it. And that's what struck me is I, I tend to think of it as a continuation and I'm looking for success by my own standards in, in that. And then just hearing it, from, you know, don't want to move and realizing like, oh, this is the first song of a record that people may or may not connect with. Those are the things. It's a strange way to begin, but, um, but that is the, that was the starting point for me is figuring out, like, I did feel this resistance. I never expressed it. I always expressed the like team player, you know, kind of like, and so, that was kind of the challenge for me to somehow get that resistance that I was feeling and that disappointment like out there. And after the last song on Phoenix is uh, leaving the Valley and there's like a grieving to that song. And then the grief turns into to like, well, resistance, I, I think is such a great way to say it. Like, but some anger, uh, I say pissed off in the song and in pain. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's sort of me trying to turn that corner. Like I, I couldn't even get to that stuff in Phoenix because I hadn't gotten here yet to realize just because I was masking all, all that time too, but I was a little or kid and still hopeful about things and whatever you could still be hopeful at 12 too, but I was starting to, to feel the disappointment just become like a, a pattern. Um, so it's, yeah, but listening to it on, on its own like that, yeah, it's, it's, it's a straight, I mean, it, I, I, part of making records, I think is getting used to, like when you go in, you're being very specific about things. And then when you zoom out, you realize just how odd this set of tunes might be, or just how, uh, and that's the process of getting used to the 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 work once i kind of like zoom out or kind of get out of the hole of 
of making it, which which I like. It, it used to bum me out because I'd think like, oh, I want this to be normal or I want this to be, you know. But with Havasu starting that way, even just like, what is he talking about? Like, don't want to move to Lake Havasu. <laughs> There's no context. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, the real the real big. Uh... The real revelation for me with listening to those albums back to back, but particularly Havasu, is how effectively you kind of um, summon the emotional arc of youth on, on Havasu, where it's mm. like, uh, and, and how it flows through, you know, with too much, it's kind of like that the first day of school anxiety, but there's also pockets of childhood wonder and simplicity. Like, I really loved mm. the first drum set because <laughs> there's... um. I like a song that is doing a lot without really, you know, without really um, moving too far along a landscape. And we're kind of just present with the wonder, the childlike wonder that comes with getting something of your own and messing around with it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Something of your really own. That's such a me. huge piece of it. Yeah. And I think yeah. it stood out to me because so much of this album is about, um, or so much, so much of what came through on the album for me was about not having autonomy or about like doing the things that are yeah. required of you, even if you don't want to do them. And for his drum set, songs like yeah. that really stood out because it was kind of like, um, you know, this is, uh, this is something that's mine and that's free and that I can have for myself. Yeah. And, um, I, I think that I'm the the question that's embedded in this um, for me is how much intention you put behind building out this emotional arc while still leaving room for pleasure and still leaving room for childlike wonder. Yeah. You know, I wanted there to be um, like, there's always these sources of hope uh, if, the way I represented it on Phoenix was in the form of like my bike, like my bike was this source of freedom and something that was my own. And I could kind of do that. And as the walls and the situation started to get kind of close in on me uh, with the moves and just with my own sort of whatever mental health stuff starting to, to, uh, to change the, the drums were really that for me too. And, and so I, I guess it, it was intentional in the sense that I wanted, like, you know, if you can only really transmit four or five key things over the course of a record, like I wanted them to be the things that that rounded out the tension of my experience then, even for myself, like the things <clears throat> that kind of had explanatory power, like there's still some hopefulness. There's still some sense of like a personhood that is con going to continue on through this. And it was sort of at the beginning of the year for me, uh, that, that of my experience there, this experience with drums and just having something, like you said, of my own, um, that was going to be a, like a, the start of a path that leads me to, to here, to ar arranging music and like, all these things that have been so helpful to me, but yeah, I wanted to put that in there because it wasn't just a bummer of a year. Like I showed up to school every day feeling like, okay, this is going to be good. Like we're going to, you know, this, I like this person or like I've got band, uh, you know, at the end or, and so there, I wanted there to be that sense, but also built into that song was the sense of just how much the authority in my life was determining, uh, what I did, like you're saying, like you're just sort of like hemmed in by all the expectations of the people. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm hoping to, it, it was as intentional as I could be without gr gripping everything so tight or feeling like I knew exactly what I was trying to do. It was still exploratory, but I wanted there to be some kind of balance there. And then just like you say, the wonder of, of music and something of your own, but, but music and the possibilities there and the energy, you know, when I saw that kid playing that beat, like if it, <laughs> it just turned a switch on, I just was like, you know, it makes me think of like when Tom Petty and everybody talks about seeing the Beatles on TV, it's just like, Oh, I can do this. Like this, here's the path to, to, to connecting with this thing that I love, you know? 
I wanted to touch on two back-to-back songs, Stranger and Good Feeling, which are on the back end, the final kind of final act of the album. Not the last two, but these two kind yeah. of felt like, um, you know, what I loved about, to talk about Phoenix and Havasu as companion pieces, the interesting thing about Havasu to me is that there are pockets of songs that feel like companion pieces. And Stranger has this sense of yeah. um, anguish in it, particularly it's, it's ending with the kind of like, I want to go home, I want to go home, that refrain. And then yeah. Good Feeling is this kind of like, um, it's almost optimistic, right? And uh, yeah, there's a duality present with those songs that feel um, companion-like and conflicted. And were you kind of, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested in how you were able to tap into this were these songs all written in order i guess is the question not not just these two but the whole album was this written the way that someone might write a book like a to b to c or were you kind of piecing together these songs thematically as you were in the emotional and headspace to write them the the latter and um and the way that my process works is kind of uh I, I want to say not ideal, but I mean, I was still writing lyrics like in the studio, trying to piece the, like the final pieces of the puzzle together. It was like a puzzle that I was building in sections and like, I would do work over here and see how things linked up. Um, and then, you, you know, in the end, even once things were done, still trying to figure out like with the ideas that, that happened, like which order should they go in? That is the, is the best flow, you know, and there were the middle section was, there was two or three different ways that it could go. And then when I happened on stranger, good feeling, and then whatever the last one is, I, um, that felt good to me. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, because it also this, you know, this record is like it, it, well, it's hard to to really like to really write about the tragic feeling that I had at the end of this year, and then also to like me making this record is a is a is a um it's a resolution to some of that tragedy, and so I felt like somehow I needed to to have a nod to like what this means to me and that, that, that there's something that about this whole process that makes this pain that this kid was feeling and alone in like that it made it okay because I'm, I'm now through the making this record, I'm now coming back and retrieving this lost self, you know, but I still needed the record to end where this myself was lost, you know, where I, I was lost and I was lost from then until now, basically in, in the way that I'm writing about, and so stranger into good feeling um yeah it just and 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 really like um old wisdom into stranger into good feeling Mm -hmm. there's a whatever connectedness there was from before that like with own valentine even though it's about loss there's still connections that are being made and and teenage sequencer and all this but then making the most of it sort of transitions into old wisdom. And then with the, the feeling of just like being in turmoil, feeling like it's your fault, especially in a religious context, it just made stranger and good feeling like these more isolated feeling songs, which is how I felt, you know, at the time. And, um, and then turning to food, you know, like you do needed to be in there. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last question I have is one I think about a lot as someone who writes things and who, you know, I'm often thinking about the, the, what I like to call the recovery process, what, which comes after a project is done. Mm -hmm. And when you exit a project that is of a heavy emotional weight, um, how do you come back to yourself? And I think for a project like this, there's a that's even more of a distinct question because you were present with yourself, a different version of yourself in the making of this. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's it's one thing to write, to be steeped in a, a difficult emotional process if there is some distance or disconnection, I think, from the writer and the speaker or the writer in the pursuit or the obsession. Yeah. 
um, it's a little bit different, I think, when you know you are the obsession, when you are you know a version of yourself that is is the pursuit or the obsession. And so I'm, I'm just um, you know I'm interested in how you are finding the recovery process of coming out of this record and kind of crawling back to the the real full version of yourself now living and breathing as you are. Um, and if you've, you know, if you've learned anything that you think, um, and I, I won't, I, you enticed me when you were like, I have a five album project that I'm envisioning, but the, the part of me, <laughs> the part of me who like knows what it's like to finish something and have people instantly be like, tell me what's next. I'm going to resist asking you about that because I, you know, the world is just getting this. So I'll yeah. let the world sit with this before, but, um, I'm interested about that recovery process and maybe what you've learned about yourself going in, uh, into these specific chambers and coming out. Um, really coming to terms with just how um, intensely and for how long I have been masking uh, my pain and disappointment as a person, it's caused me to want to, just be really mindful about that and and do that less um part of what i think is that by doing this work i'm sort of bringing these sort of kid versions of myself that i've been estranged from like back into like integrated into my um my current my like real-time self you know um and part of what I learned is by spending time with that, the, the mindset of my 12 and 13 year old self is like, there's a cheesiness that like I love, that I loved then. And that I was reticent, like that my body and my process led me into on the record, like first drum set, there's like a kind of a cheesiness to part of it. And like own Valentine has like a, for some reason it reminds me of three men and a baby, like, which I loved that movie back then. It was like my favorite movie. Um, and so part of it is just realizing, like, I think there's a, there's a natural kind of, um, I have a natural taste for certain things that I shed over time. Cause they're not as cool. Like moving to Santa Cruz, which happens next was a real shock because the, the degree of coolness in that place was untouchable. It was baked in so deep. You couldn't, you couldn't hope to, to become native to it, you know? And I wonder if that's where I lost some of it, but just, just sitting with this record and the choices that I made. And I just like myself and the cheesiness that I gravitate toward sometimes or the sappy romantic sort of stuff a little more and and i feel like i'm more comfortable being that way you know which i like yeah well thank you for this album and once again thank you for talking with us and thank you to everyone who's watching and listening along uh big congrats on the album havasu which is out today and available for purchase wherever great records are sold if you are in columbus ohio where i am right now you can get it at spoonful records which i'm gonna do um, but there are also a ton of great record shops in the city lost weekend use kids. They're all going to have it. So go ahead and grab it wherever though. Um, for NPR music, I'm Hanif Abdurraqib. Thank you for joining us.